Welcome to Designerverse TV. Today in our program, uh, we have Kerry Shores Dealer, architect and co-founder of Inspire ADUs. Welcome to the program, Kerry. Uh, before we jump into the conversation, tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you end up, uh, you know, founding this company? Yeah, great. Um, thanks for having me. So I have been practicing architecture in the San Francisco Bay Area uh, since finishing my master's at Cal and uh, launched my architecture firm with my partner, Josh Larson, in about 2003. Um, and our office does commercial, residential, uh, multifamily architecture. But when we were working on um, kind of our legacy and what was important to us to come out of um, our practice, we started really looking at accessory dwelling units and multi-generational living and senior housing. And it was actually out of the recession in 2008 that we started really working on accessory dwelling units and founded Inspired ADUs. Tell us a little bit about you know, before the COVID-19 and how the situation was, how was the market look like for you guys in at ADU specifically? Sure. So um, in 2008, when we started, it was a bit of an uphill battle. The state of California at that point had recognized that we were going to have a major housing shortage. And so they put into place um, some legislation to help encourage accessory dwelling units. Um, but there was a lot of... Um, opportunity for local cities and municipalities to make that more and more difficult for the homeowner. But fast forwarding, um, we had amazing legislation that went into effect um, in 2017. And then again, in January of this year, we had six new um, bills go into effect that helped promote and simplify the process of accessory dwelling units. So we were seeing a very healthy, steady incline before um, COVID-19. What did happen after COVID-19? I know there, there was a lockdown period that nothing could have been done, but now you're back almost to the business. Yeah, we actually saw a huge increase in um, calls and people interested in accessory dwelling units. I mean, one thing they offer is additional space. They offer a lot more flexibility. So we're seeing um, a couple of phenomenons happening. One, people are all trapped in their homes and feeling like they'd like a little bit more space. Um, two, we've got adult kids like mine doing college at home. So they're, you know, you know, holed up in their bedroom or not really having enough space to feel like they're operating a normal life. And then three, we saw, um, you know, what's been happening with our nursing homes and our seniors. And it's been um, a lot of people now want to be a little more proactive about planning for retirement and aging in place and um, really liking the idea of multiple generations on one lot, but with separate spaces. From what you're describing, it feels like there has been a cultural change. I think so. I mean, I think we've been headed that way. We historically had, you know, everybody went west young man and established their own home in their own area and now we're seeing a real return to values that we had a long time ago where you know families had lived in the same house or in the same block in the same neighborhood um, for multiple generations and now we're feeling like people are choosing that lifestyle right they want their family closer um, they want to be able to support each other either in childcare or aging or just you know pool resources economically. Um, so we're really seeing a shift in values, and I think a really positive thing to come out of this. But interesting when you look at California's housing and the crisis specifically, um, there are a lot of houses that have the space for these kind of um, ADUs, you know, the dwelling um, units. But there were some resistance, as you mentioned, there's a bit of uh, kind of resistance from the state and you know decision makers and permit uh, you know, issuers do you see do you think that would change well the laws that went into effect um, january 1 of this year have really um taken away local jurisdictions ability to make it more difficult so um, there's a couple great things that you know by it's a by right a ministerial approval meaning if you have the lot size and you um, can meet the new codes it's it's not something that's subjective you can't be forced to go into design review 
the plans have to be approved um, basically over the counter for planning and then they're still checked by building and fire for um, building code regulations but um, a lot of the hurdles have been removed at the state level and um, I think we're seeing since there was major legislation two years ago around ADUs we're seeing that cities are starting to recognize that um, this is a way for cities to capture affordable housing because our land cost in California is so incredibly high that if you can build on an existing property, we're really capturing um, some economics there and taking advantage of land that's already paid for and then adding an extra house. So cities are starting to see that these are a good thing and that they're a sustainable way for our cities to grow. You know, we're using existing infrastructure, schools, police, fire departments, and just adding a little more density, but not really changing the character of the of the neighborhood. If you get to a little bit more specific about what's happening at the moment in California, specifically about ADUs, um, did you manage to get through any permit within this, you know, after the lockdown? Yes, we have been... Um, we have been filing permits. There was a brief window where um, cities were shut down, but it's been a really great time for um, homeowners to plan. So, you know, if you even working with our plans, which are a streamlined package, it still takes some time to make the decisions, uh, identify how the ADU is going to fit in your yard, um, understand utility hookups and connections, and get the structural engineering done. So we had a great opportunity to work with a lot of clients to be ready. And then as soon as cities reopen their um, planning and permit departments online, we submitted, I think, about 12 projects as soon as the cities opened up. And we were seeing a lot of encouragement, like the city of Oakland um, was for a while only accepting accessory dwelling unit applications to try to keep that housing moving forward. Um, and now they're back to being in full business, but we saw a lot of great encouragement around permitting accessory dwelling units. I think they're also something that we can build in more of a safe and healthy manner with what's happening right now, because often um, the majority of our cottages we're building are freestanding in the backyard. So you can, you're not gonna have construction members in your house. They're in the yard, you can be social distance. There's, you know, it's an easier project to undertake right now versus renovating your kitchen or, you know, opening up your main primary residence. Moving forward from ADUs, uh, it looks like the architecture scene is going to change a little bit. At least it, you have to kind of respond to the crisis that we are in, already in, and we don't know when it's going to end and if, if there isn't any, going to be any second stage or wave coming uh, our way. What's your vision about the future of architecture? Well, I think there's going to be some some implications of how we design. Um, I think we're working on a restaurant in downtown Oakland, and typically the business model of a restaurant is you look at the number of tables and the number of seats and how many turnovers they need to, to get the business model to work. But now we're looking at it from a different angle, and you're looking at, okay, if, if seating is reduced for social distancing, um, how does that change the model? How does that change the design? How do we design in kind of flexibility for restaurateurs to kind of expand or contract? Um, so there's a lot of interesting pieces like that. I think I'm also sitting in our, um, our office, which is an open office floor plan um, by myself because our staff is still all working remotely. But we've moved to this kind of open air, flexible desks in our commercial world. And I just am not sure yet what that implication is going to look like in terms of how we design office space. Are we are we back to the, you know, the glassed in office spaces? Are we, you know, even looking at how we design it at an urban level in terms of how wide a sidewalk is? Are we starting to look at, do we need to plan for people to be further apart? Um, so it's a really interesting time. I mean, I think this could have a lot of implications on how how we do design at a, at a lot of the levels. And um, it's just hard to know where it's going to go at this point yet. Before we end the conversation, I want to just uh, step back and look at the whole thing from the distance. And then let's try and put ourselves in the future. 
Um, mm. How would you how would you describe your experience within this time as an architect? Um, what would you want to remember and take it with you to the future? You know, I think the real positive thing, you know, we've been trying to get people to be proactive about planning for how they're going to live in their senior years. And people have been very resistant to do that. And when you look around at what's out there for senior housing, I understand why they're resistant. You know, they're looking a lot at more institutional um, spaces that are not inspired or not exciting. And so um, the real shift we've seen is that we've gone from a group of people who avoid kind of designing their future to people who are really being proactive. And, um, you know, myself included, I've been working on an accessory dwelling unit for my house. Um, and I have my mom 90 miles away, which isn't that far, but it's, it's a little far to drive up and stand outside her window and wave and then come back home. So, I mean, what I hope people do is they take this idea of, urgency or just being proactive. It doesn't necessarily have to be about urgency, but being proactive and taking action and let's keep that momentum going. You know, getting these accessory dwelling units going, I think will really help our economy get back on its feet. If we can keep contractors and subs working, um, it really is gonna do a lot to keep our housing crisis from becoming a housing catastrophe. And I think kind of building these ADUs on the urban density, um, in the backyards. It's just a really sustainable, smart way for our cities to grow. So I hope people, um, you know, just take the opportunity to make their space better and more beautiful and think about how it's going to work for them now and in the future. I mean, it is interesting to see all celebrities and all sorts of people with their Zoom backgrounds and you get a little bit of a voyeuristic peek into what their homes look like. But, you know, take advantage of your space, whether it's your house or your office or your business has a huge impact on you psychologically. And I think as we've all been um, in our spaces in a different way that they weren't necessarily designed for, let's let's keep up the momentum of, of designing for how we want to live and be proactive about it. It's been a pleasure, Kerry Shore uh, dealer. It's been amazing conversation. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Audio